Greetings, everyone. Uh, this October, we are celebrating the National Museums and Galleries Month and also the Indigenous Peoples Month. So I am Randy Noblesa from the Institute of Arts and Social Sciences. And I'd like to share some uh, background on the uh, extension and community involvement in regards to cultural mapping project in the province of Marinduque. So since 2017, we're able to forge a partnership with the National Commission for Culture and the Arts uh, with uh, the then president, Dr. Mary N. C. Mani, and the then uh, NCCA Executive Director, Rico S. Pableo. So we started in the town of Mugpug, and we were able to schedule uh, training for the local mapping team by uh, June 2018. And by uh, October, we were also able to uh, have a training with the town of Buena Vista. And from then on, uh, we moved from one town to uh, the next, and uh, we were able to produce at least uh, one uh, completed and turned over uh, local culture profile in the town of uh, Santa Cruz. So there are at least seven phases of cultural mapping uh, project. So we start with the uh, scoping and negotiation when we uh, explain to the sponsoring local government uh, unit and uh, we identify the mappers during the next phase of the uh, CMAP or cultural mapping project with the social preparation. And after that, uh, we'll be conducting at least uh, five days for the training of local mappers where uh, NCCA assigns or uh, hires a, a facilitator. So it so happened that uh, we were trained in 2017 and we were uh, deployed in 2018, the following year. And after the five days training, there would be a data gathering uh, phase, which would uh, take place with a span of uh, at least six months. And after which there would be a couple of uh, follow-up visit. During the first follow-up visit, there would be uh, at least 50% of the target has been met. And around uh, with 80% or uh, completed the uh, data gathering phase. So we would uh, have the second uh, uh, follow-up visit. So this is uh, during the pre-pandemic uh, uh, days. So after the couple of data gathering, we'd be having the uh, community validation where NCC invites external validators and uh, uh, identified culture bearers and key informants from the community uh, would be joining as internal validators. And with the process, the whole community participate and by then, they would be able to uh, point out the uh, comments and the suggestions so that uh, the local culture profile would be finalized. And after it gets finalized, it would be turned over uh, by the LGU to the National Commission for Culture and Arts. And uh, this is the second to the last phase before uh, the last uh, phase the analysis uh, with the results and uh, the planning that comes after. So this phase is about the utilization of the uh, results of the local culture profile. So going back to the uh, objectives. So there's already a toolkit around uh, 2019. It was uh, published. So it was based on the experience on the ground. So the trained uh, facilitators uh, are also using the same uh, toolkit with the standardized uh, forms for uh, mapping. So there are at least five 
uh, objectives. So one is uh, to understand basic frameworks on culture and heritage based on the National uh, Heritage Act of 2009 or RA 10066. So the second uh, objective is to appreciate the value of various cultural resources in the community. Uh, the third uh, objective is to apply different tools and methods for gathering, classifying, and analyzing local culture data. So the fourth uh, objective is to consolidate the local culture profile and generate um, some baseline data for cultural statistics. And the last objective of the cultural mapping project is to recommend certain mechanisms to integrate the profiles and baseline statistics for LGU development plans, programs, and activities. So before, uh, cultural mapping project used to be a technical uh, assistance. So NCCA takes care of the facilitators while the LGU for their counterpart takes care of their local mapping team. But uh, in from 2000, 20 onwards, especially during the time of pandemic, it was transformed into a grant. So the NCCA provides funding to the local government units so that they can pursue uh, cultural mapping even in the times of pandemic. So let me talk about the status of the cultural mapping uh, project in the province of Marinduque and also in the region of Mimaropa and beyond the Marinduque and Mimaropa. So as I mentioned, we started with the town of uh, Mungpog in June 2018 and before the uh, last quarter and ended in 2018, we were able to train one more uh, set of local mapping team in the town of Buena Vista. So at the moment, uh, Mugpug is uh, still in their data gathering phase and they are preparing for the community validation. So this is understandable because during the time it was still technical uh, assistance and not yet a grant. So same case with the town of Buena Vista. But in the town of Buena Vista, after the training, they were able to have the first uh, follow-up visit along with Mugpug, but that's where they uh, stopped but uh, they were able to pick it up and they were, uh, uh, they were able to publish a coffee table book based on the initial results of cultural mapping. So that's the Buena Vista coffee table book. So at the moment, uh, they're not yet decided to pursue uh, the data gathering or to proceed to the community validation. So it's a good thing that uh, in between, we were able to uh, diversify some uh, cultural mapping trainings. So not only within the town of uh, Mugpug and Buena Vista, also in the province of Marinduque. So I was uh, assigned to conduct the social preparation in the uh, Cebuyan Island in the town of San Fernando around 2019 before the pandemic uh, struck by the following year. So we were also able to train uh, the local mapping team of Sagada in Cordillera Administrative Region and Tiwi Albay again in 2019. But so far, they were only able to have the uh, first follow-up visit and they're doing still the data gathering process since there's uh, the national health and even a global uh, health crisis. So quite recently, we're also able to train via uh, online and flexible modalities the local mapping team of Sofronio Española in uh, Palawan and also uh, Actually, this uh, previous week, October uh, 4 to 8, we were uh, able to 
they were able to train the local batting team of Mansalai Oriental Mindoro. So going back to the town of uh, the other towns of Marinduque, as I mentioned, Santa Cruz were able to uh, do the training via Zoom and also in the town of Gasan. But Gasan is still doing their uh, finalization and uh, they're about to turn over the, the local culture profile that is finalized. So they were able to pass through the community validation phase and uh, Santa Cruz uh, has been able to uh, turn over their local culture profile last uh, July. And I hope that uh, within the last quarter, Gasan would be able to do the same. And the last two towns, uh, Torrijos, is uh, contemplating whether or not to pursue because they are also grantees of uh, culture mapping uh, project from NCCA, just like Gasan and Santa Cruz. That's why compared to uh, Mugpog and Buena Vista, so they, they have uh, funding from NCCA and also in the time of pandemic. So uh, Santa Cruz was able to do it in 2020 by October and by December they were able to have their uh, validation and just this uh, April to May they already uh, finalized the local culture profile before they turned it over uh, last July 21. Uh, Gasan was able to have their uh, training last February uh, this year. So they're just uh, having uh, a hard time uh, in finalizing their uh, local culture profile. But I am confident that they would be able to uh, deliver uh, on time because if they are grantees, they need to also liquidate their uh, expenses. So that's about it, the status of uh, cultural mapping project in the town of uh, Marinduque, also in the region 4B in Mimaropa and also beyond Marinduque and Mimaropa. So Mugpog is not yet done. Uh, but they're preparing for their uh, community validation. And by next year, they would uh, pursue this and have not only the uh, local culture profile, but they are intending to also have a coffee table book similar to that of uh, Buena Vista. And uh, Santa Cruz was able to uh, turn over their local culture profile. And Gasan is hoping to do the same. Uh, while Torrijos and Buak, the capital town of Buak, I did not mention, but uh, Buak has already undergone cultural mapping, but with the University of Santo Tomas around 2011 to 2013. So they're done already, but uh, their templates and their uh, forms are not yet standardized, but uh, they have their uh, respective output. And uh, we're also fortunate enough to uh, experience cultural mapping in Sagada and also in Tiwi. And uh, this is very helpful. And more helpful is we are also serving our fellow Mimaropans in Palawan, in Rumblon, and also in Mindoro. So in the end, uh, I'd like to share the harmonized agenda in 2018 that I believe that uh, uh, Marinduque State uh, College of today is uh, updating uh, suitable for the pandemic or post-pandemic futures when uh, in uh, Marinduque would become a state university. So there are at least uh, 10 uh, agendum uh, that is uh, devoted to culture and values. So I am proud that uh, number one of this uh, uh, agendum is about culture and heritage mapping. And uh, second would be about humanities. So this is very timely because this was uh, conceptualized during the time 
when the School of Arts and Sciences and the School of Education are still separate uh, schools or entity. So now they are combined with the Institute of uh, Arts and Social Sciences. So the third uh, agenda is education and pedagogy. So uh, the School of Graduate Education and Professional Studies is also offering a diploma course on cultural education. And we also have an undergrad uh, program with bachelors of uh, culture, arts, and education. This is a pioneering program so that the graduate of special program of the arts in the middle school in grade 11 and 12, they would uh, have something to uh, transition in their college. And after they graduate, they could become teachers and also enroll in Hopefully, we already have a MAED program in cultural education. And the fourth uh, agenda is about history and social sciences. So we are also interested with the uh, local history. So last 2020, Marinduca just celebrated its 100 years of uh, autonomy from the uh, neighboring uh, province of Tayabas, formerly Tayabas and nowadays Quezon. So we, we were funded internally and came up with a collaborative research with the School of Education and the School of Arts and Sciences. And uh, number five, so this is uh, about Advocacine. So Advocacine is an annual perennial event of the Marinduque Alliance of Youth Advocates. So this is a youth organization supported by the international uh, non-governmental organization. Uh, um, and they used to stay in the selected uh, towns in Marinduque, especially in uh, Buena Vista. So the Norwegian Mission Alliance uh, was able to come up with a youth organization, which is Maya. And Maya uh, organized the uh, one-minute video uh, competition about their respective uh, advocacy. So when they asked for School of Arts and Sciences some technical assistance, so we developed uh, advocacy so that uh, it would reach uh, a larger audience. And especially nowadays during the pandemic, so we still have to uh, use the power of media for such advocacies. And number six, so it's about language enhancement. So in due respect to the previous uh, uh, trust and the priorities of the arts and sciences before becoming IAS and transitioning from the liberal arts uh, curriculum, so we have this uh, traditional language, English language enhancement for an extension. And likewise, number seven. So we also have a journalism uh, extension where we cater both public and private schools. So the private school, uh, we train student journalists from Marinduque Academy in the town of uh, Mugpog. And we also train some students of the Maranduque uh, Comprehensive National High School, also in the same town, in Mugpug. So it's good that uh, not only we give some training, but uh, we also have uh, MSC Examural Study Center in the town uh, Mugpug already. So number eight, uh, theater production is our one of our uh, agenda. So theater production, we have the uh, MSC Theater Guild. So it was organized a number of years ago with the leadership of uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Rosalinda Castro. So it was known as Teatro Marinduqueño before and it was transformed to uh, MSC Theater Guild. So most of our students from uh, both AP English and Communication, they are the ones who are joining the theater production. And just this year, even in the times of COVID-19, 
we're able to mount uh, digitized and recorded uh, theater production. So second to the last, uh, before we implemented the new English language uh, studies uh, curriculum, so we used to have at least five literature subjects. So we have uh, world literature, Philippine literature, Afro-Asian, Anglo-American, and uh, European literature. So we have lots and lots of literature subjects. So it's good thing that uh, some of the literature major, not actually the literature major, but English language uh, studies major. So they were the ones around 2014 and 15 who organized MSc Literature Club. So they are the ones who are taking up uh, creative writing courses and they were able to put out uh, some literary folio. So in 2018 and 19. Just to continue, so with the harmonized agenda in 2018, the last uh, item is about uh, arts and crafts. So uh, MSC is putting out uh, uh, museum, but it's still a museum in conceptualization. But uh, we already undergone some training with the uh, UP Baguio because they have the Museo Cordillera. And this is uh, sponsored by the Commission on Higher Education Program. So since 2020, when we needed to pivot from the traditional face-to-face -to, -face to a more flexible uh, and digital learning environment. <clears throat> so uh, the same 10 agenda corresponds to the uh, program area seven, culture and values. So this is also encapsulated in the Philippine Development Plan in chapter seven about cultures and uh, values. So out of this, we're able to graph the R&D priority areas in 1 to 10. So from cultural heritage mapping to humanities, education and pedagogy, history and social sciences, language and culture, arts and crafts, language enhancement, journalism, theater production, and advocacy. So let me just uh, focus on the expected <clears throat> outcomes of the said agenda and uh, priority areas. So the first agenda is about culture and heritage mapping. So the expected outcome is to have an effective preservation and transmission of political and cultural uh, heritage. So we did not uh, encounter much problem despite the uh, inconvenience of COVID-19. So still we were able to carry out cultural and heritage mapping even <clears throat> in the digital and online uh, environment. And I like to believe that we're able to uh, help in the preservation and transmission of cultural heritage through uh, mapping. So might it be a technical assistance or a grant from NCCA to the respective uh, LGUs or local governments. So the next uh, priority area is about humanities. So the expected outcome is effective documentation, preservation, and transmission of culture. So this is quite uh, related to the first uh, agenda. So of course, uh, what we are aiming at is to conserve, preserve, and also protect. So after we raise some uh, awareness and we made use of cultural lens. So the next uh, step is to uh, conserve and preserve and eventually protect uh, our cultural assets. So the third one is about education and pedagogy. Therefore, the expected uh, studies on methods and strategies of teaching, tracer studies, assessment of learning and curriculum development. So uh, we started the graduate diploma in cultural education in 2019, and we were able to uh, have the first batch. So at the moment, uh, started from 2020 until 2021, we'll have 
batch two. And by then, I think we'd have the first batch of the PICA and uh, undergraduate uh, program. And the uh, first batch uh, would be uh, part of the pool of uh, the MAED and culture education, hopefully to be offered by the School of Graduate uh, Education and Professional Studies uh, in the near future. So for history and social sciences, so the expected outcomes is collaborative studies for the preservation and management of cultural heritage. So therefore, we are not working in silos. So we need to collaborate with other institutions. So that's why uh, we are a member of the National Research Council of the Philippines in the, uh, in the Humanities Division. So this is where we meet our contemporaries and our peers and even our former teachers and students alike. And that's where we collaborate in certain uh, aspects of uh, cultural heritage. So number five regarding language and culture. So the expected outcome is to have integrative and collaborative studies for preservation and conservation. So the same thing. So we are already uh, in the phase where our uh, former students are already our colleagues and peers, and they are starting to have their own advocacies. So like uh, the Heart uh, Council and the Heart Movement, so they already have their own activities, they have their own webinar series, and uh, we're excited in the near future uh, when they continue their advocacies, even in the digital and uh, online environment. <clears throat> so for arts and crafts, so the expected uh, output or outcomes is uh, to have an effective preservation of Marinduque's arts and crafts. So therefore, in Marinduque, based on cultural mapping, we're able to identify the <clears throat> intangible <clears throat> cultural heritage <clears throat> and uh, by, by so doing, we'll be able to identify the, <clears throat> the cultural masters and the culture bearers and the practitioners and uh, we'll be able to uh, provide more support so that uh, they can transmit their uh, indigenous knowledge to their uh, uh, to the people they they are living with in the same community. And uh, in the near future, so we'd uh, try to also expand and uh, provide more service to others. So even with uh, <clears throat> our province made from the Mimaropa region, because for example, Moriones uh, as an intangible cultural practice is not only present in Marinduque, but it also travels uh, in other neighboring parts of Mimaropa and even in Calabarso. So there's in Quezon, there's also in <clears throat> Mindoro. So next about language and enhancement. So we expect to have a outcome of uh, effective and efficient programs for language enhancement. So based on our prior experience, with the daycare workers. And I think right now we are working with the Department of Inter and Local Governance. And uh, we shared this in one town also in Mukpog with the uh, barangay uh, officials. So they're the, they're the ones who are uh, trained or being trained in language enhancement instead of the daycare workers. So the wisdom of this is uh, they already have the structure uh, to serve uh, our public servants. So number eight regarding journalism. So the expected outcomes is responsible and reliable journalism for all, especially in the election season. So there are a lot of media outlets where with, who are just mushrooming and uh, they just uh, appear when election comes and after the election they fold up so no more uh, 
uh, journalists or responsible citizens. So that's why we need to have more re reliable and responsible community journalists. So not only for the competition in the press conferences. So number nine regarding theater production. So the expected outcome is to have a world-class theater production. So hopefully we can continue. Uh, we're able to begin with the Getsemane. So we hope that uh, we can uh, continue and have more production. So we were planning to have a short film, but uh, we have to wait and see if the quarantine status would uh, improve. But definitely this is among the plans of uh, the Culture and Arts Unit of the college. It's part of the continuity plan. So hopefully we'll be able to have this expected outcomes as well. And for the last one, for the last uh, priority area or agenda about advocacy. So we also have uh, expected outcomes, which is uh, to have a world-class film production. So, so it's uh, resonating not only with theater, but also with the medium of film. So this is also part and parcel of the literary club. So they're going to develop the concept and write the script and uh, try it for the stage for a theater production and eventually adapt this in the film uh, medium. So especially in times of uh, pandemic. So to end, uh, there are lots of <clears throat> implication and, uh, and insights from the experience of cultural mapping so for community involvement, we are able to reach farther uh, the towns of uh, Marinduque and also in the region of Mimaropa. And because of this uh, setup, we are also able to reach uh, others beyond our uh, borders. And this is consistent with our harmonized uh, agenda and our priority areas. And uh, the expected outcomes are congruent to this hopefully we'll be able to uh, provide the necessary uh, documents and uh, evidences to make it more coherent and substantive for the succeeding years. And we welcome uh, the input and uh, the suggestion of our accreditors. So on that note, uh, thank you. And again, I greet you with this uh, month of October. Happy Museums and Galleries Month and Indigenous Peoples Month. So, Keep safe and stay healthy.